worship to Jehovah with song. A song selected for this afternoon is uh, song number 102. Song number 102 is based on Acts 20.35. Its title is Assist Those Who Are Weak. Assist Those Who Are Weak. And after uh, we sing, we'd ask uh, if Brother Rene could uh, please uh, lead us in prayer to Jehovah. So if you could please stand and please sing together song number 102. Learning 
from our mistake, right? So we want to think of both of those, right? With our desire to help, and maybe when things don't go so well, how we can uh, forgive ourselves and learn from that. Uh, and then we'll continue on with the congregation Bible study, and uh, uh, we'll continue with that forward. Without further ado, we'll start the meeting off right away with Brother Meyer. you ever made a mistake? You just, just didn't get it right. You might be at school or at work. At school, you didn't carry that zero over when you were doing your addition, or at work, you uh, forgot that little, that little something. <laughs> Could be anything. <laughs> we all make mistakes. Um, it's very common, and uh, often we uh, we are confronted with two paths the right one and maybe not the, the, the right one and we just straight up know that that's right and we we'll just go the other way. It can happen as well. We, we just make a, a bad decision. But if we do, if we have ever made a mistake or a bad decision, we're in good company because we're all among friends. We've all made mistakes. We've all done it. And one thing that friends are good for is that we have the opportunity, if we're smart, to learn from their mistakes. So Jehovah's people are forgiving people. And because we know that we're all imperfect and, and we know that these things happen, we all, we all make mistakes. Now, the Bible books that we're considering tonight have examples of what happens when you make mistakes, but also what happens when we learn from our mistakes and the great privileges that we can share in um, as a result of learning from them. So maybe to start, we will have uh, the first video of Obadiah, about Obadiah, uh, played. An Introduction to the Book of Obadiah Obadiah was a prophet of Jehovah. He recorded his prophecy about 607 BCE after the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. <coughs> Obadiah was a contemporary of Jeremiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel. The Book of Obadiah is the shortest book in the Hebrew Scriptures. It has just one chapter. Obadiah conveys a judgment message against the nation of Edom. During the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, the Edomites rejoice at Israel's suffering. Edomites capture fleeing Israelites. They hand them over to the Babylonians and share in taking spoil from the conquered Jews. Did you know? The Edomites were related to the Israelites. They were descendants of Jacob's twin brother Esau. He was given the name Edom, meaning red, after he sold his birthright for some red lentil stew. <coughs> Obadiah prophesies that the nation of Edom will be plundered at the hands of her former allies. This prophecy begins to be fulfilled when the Babylonians conquer Edom. In time, Edom ceases to exist. In the closing verses, Jehovah promises to restore his people as a unified nation and reestablish true worship in Jerusalem. The book concludes with a statement, The kingship will become Jehovah's, indicating that Jehovah's kingship will stand vindicated forever. As you read Obadiah, note how Jehovah is aware of the persecution his people suffer, how Jehovah gives his people hope in times of distress, and how Jehovah's lasting kingship will stand vindicated forever. So we see an example uh, in Obadiah of the, the Edomites. Um, they made mistakes. They chose to side with uh, Israelites' oppressors and even shared in the spoils and, and helped these ones, which were their relatives, uh, uh, you know, be captured and put under, uh, put under bad situation. So uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't learn from the example of their, uh, their uh, forefather, Esau, who also 
didn't appreciate the privilege uh, that he had, and he gave up his birthright uh, for something of really very little value. So as a result, uh, the Edomites no longer exist. So this is an example of a mistake. And they didn't learn from it and the consequences. Now, um, our next Bible book that we consider is uh, the book of Jonah. So we'll have an overview of that. <coughs> An Introduction to the Book of Jonah Jehovah assigned the prophet Jonah to deliver a warning to the Assyrian city of Nineveh. Jonah prophesied sometime during the reign of Israel's King Jeroboam II. Jonah wrote the book bearing his name about 844 BCE. This was about 100 years before Assyria took Israel into exile and some 200 years before Nahum foretold the destruction of the Assyrian city of Nineveh. Jonah lived about the time of Amos, who also prophesied in the northern kingdom of Israel, and Joel, who prophesied in Judah. The book of Jonah has four chapters. In chapters 1 and 2, we learn of Jonah receiving an assignment from Jehovah to go to Nineveh. Overwhelmed, Jonah evades the assignment by boarding a ship headed for Tarshish. Jehovah causes a terrible storm to come up at sea. Jonah knows that he is responsible for the storm and tells the sailors to throw him overboard. When they do, the storm abates. Jehovah sends a huge fish to swallow Jonah. From inside the fish's belly, Jonah prays to Jehovah, and his prayer is heard. Jehovah then commands the fish, and it vomits Jonah out onto dry land. Did you know? Jesus foretold that he would die and be resurrected on the third day. He called this the sign of Jonah the prophet alluding to Jonah's deliverance from the huge fish. Chapter 3 describes how Jonah carries out his assignment. He preaches the message that Nineveh will soon be overthrown. To Jonah's surprise, however, the Ninevites repent, <coughs> and Jehovah mercifully spares them. Chapter 4 reveals that instead of rejoicing over the repentance of the Ninevites, Jonah becomes angry. He sets up a shelter outside the city to see what will happen. Jehovah uses a bottle gourd plant and a worm to teach Jonah a valuable lesson in loyal love and mercy. As you read the book of Jonah, note how Jonah accepted correction and fulfilled his assignment. How Jehovah displayed loyal love and mercy toward the repentant Ninevites, and how Jesus used Jonah's experience to foretell his own death and resurrection, which opens the way to everlasting life under God's kingdom. <laughs> so we see from the book of Jonah that even a chosen prophet of Jehovah can make mistakes at, time, at times, and Jonah did. It wasn't a small one. Um, the mistake that he, what was the mistake that, that Jonah made uh, when Jehovah gave him an assignment? Well, he did the exact opposite of what he was told to do. Um, and it wasn't a split decision. If we look at the verses in Jonah, uh, if you have your Bibles open to Jonah chapter 1, verses 3, it says that Jonah he got up to run away from Jehovah to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to charge So he had to take the time, go to the coast, find a ship. He had to pay the fare, then get aboard to, to follow through with this, uh, this, this poor decision, this mistake that he had made. So he took planning and effort. But in the end, Jonah did take responsibility for his mistake. Um, he told the sailors in, in the ship to throw him over. He knew he was... He was uh, in, the, in the wrong, and it was because of him that these things were happening. Um, so as he was sinking, he was certainly about to die. Well, then he was saved by Jehovah. And what did he do? Well, in verses uh, 
chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, we see Jonah's prayer to Jehovah. So he prayed to him. Uh, he prayed about the mercies that Jehovah had shown him and thanked him for saving him by having a fish swallowing him. Uh, you may not think of a giant fish swallowing you as being a, a saving act, but he was certainly about to die, and it did it did save him. And while he was in uh, in that fish, that's when he, he really was able to pray uh, to thank Jehovah for this. So he recognized his mistake, and he vowed that he would fulfill what Jehovah wanted him to do. So Jehovah gave him a second chance, and uh, he even made the fish spit him up on dry land. He could have just spit him out anywhere and made him swim to shore, but he showed Jonah even more kindness by by putting him up, up on land there. So how did Jonah show that he had learned from his mistakes? Well, in chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, we read that when the word of Jehovah came to, Jeho- to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up. Go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to her the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up, and he went to Nineveh in obedience to the word of Jehovah. So he he followed through uh, the second time. And because he obeyed in fulfilling his assignment, hundreds of thousands of people were saved as a result of the ones that he was preaching to in Nineveh. So how about, us, how about us today? We know that there's not just hundreds of thousands of lives at stake, there's billions of lives at stake. And we can feel the same way that, that, Jonah does, that Jonah did. Do we shy away from things that we may know that Jehovah wants us to do? Maybe it's a new avenue of service, uh, something that scares us we're not really comfortable with. It can be the public witnessing or the metro witnessing campaign. It could be a situation at work or at school that we shy away from where we know we could really give a good witness here, but we we don't. So these things could give us the same feeling that Jonah had, but instead of running away, we can pray for boldness, and then we can carry out the privilege of, of being Jehovah's Witnesses. The only thing better than learning from our own mistakes is learning from someone else's mistakes. So we can learn from Jonah. The account of Jonah shows us that Jehovah does not give up on us when we make mistakes. However, he does expect us to learn from our mistakes and make the needed changes. Thank you very much, Brother Meyer. We really do appreciate that. We'll now continue uh, with further examination of this of uh, Obadiah and uh, how those are applied to us today. And that was like the grain for thinking for spiritual gems. Well, first of all, we need a reader for Obadiah, verse 10. And let's see. Brother, um, right. Because of the violent drunk in your brother Jacob, shame will cover you, and you will perish forever. Okay, thank you. So let's think about the question here. It says, how did Edom perish forever? I'm talking forever. What do we know about Edom? Good people, bad people, Sister Douglas. We know that first it was conquered and then it became extinct as a place to Okay, good. And uh, Sister uh, Lisa. And the um, Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 CE, and this is when the Edomites ceased to exist. Okay, good. Thank you. So, okay, so let's think about this second question. But before we ask this question, Obadiah verse 12. Who would like to read that? Uh, Sister Lean. You should not gloat over your brother's day on the day of his misfortune. You should not rejoice over the people of Judah on the day of their perishing. 
and you should not speak so arrogantly on the day of their distress. <coughs> Thank you very much. So now think about what, what was just read, and now the question is, what lesson can we learn from God's condemnation of Edom? Celeste. Excuse me. Uh, so if we have a problem with a brother, um, with a brother, um, if we have a problem with a brother or a sister, we do not harbor resentment. We put the matter behind us, and and if we get counseled by the Christian elders, we do not rejoice. Okay, very good example and lesson. Thank you, uh, Sister Traver. So in the verse that brings you not to gloat over your on the, over your brother's day on the day of his misfortune, and the the article there. Um, the book brings out that it could be our our actions towards ones could be affected by our feelings. The Jehovah can read our heart, so he can see even if our actions actually are displaying civility towards our brothers and sisters. It brings out, would you, um, if a brother <coughs> erred and received counsel, how would we re react? Would we rejoice over their difficulty even? So w when a situation occurs to one of our brothers, if we have any uh, grudge or resentment towards them, we need to figure that out because Jehovah is very clear that we should be uh, getting rid of any feelings of this, any any sort of um, rejoicing in our brother's misfortune. Okay, very good application. And Sister Hanson. And what can help us um, work at this is viewing how Jehovah wants us to act. And we saw the result when the Edomites did what they did, and they ended up being completely obliterated, and we would certainly not want that to happen to us. Okay, very good. Okay, so, so the lesson is taken, and uh, we know what we should do, and not have that bad or uh, feelings against our brothers or sisters that we put in our minds where it starts to really uh, uh, keep us from serving Jehovah. <coughs> we want uh, a good relationship and we don't want it to be damaged. So good application. So now let's uh, think about our third question. It says, what has this week's Bible reading taught you about Jehovah? All right. Well, it's kind of a reminder of Jehovah's personality. Uh, many people read uh, accounts in the Hebrew scriptures when there is sometimes a nation wiped out and it sounds like a, a genocide or it sounds uh, very cruel to think that the God of the Bible is a cruel God but when we got the context of what happened here so these, these were hateful people they trapped people who were innocent people who were trying to escape turn them over to these vicious Babylonians uh, they proved themselves to be worthy of a judgment much like a murderer who gets put in prison in our day uh, no one complains about that, that's accepted. So that's what often happens in the Hebrew scriptures when these ones are facing these enemies because of uh, what they've done. So uh, the only not a cruel God is if we read the context, we can easily see exactly what I've said. Okay, good example. Thank you. Um, we'll have uh, Manuela. That you can pray to Jehovah anyway. Good. And Sister Gill. Um, Jonah 3 and 10, speaking of how Jehovah felt with breath over the calamity he had spoken, uh, really highlights that Jehovah has, is abundant in mercy. It wasn't that he had an error of judgment, it was that he saw the change of heart in the Ninevites and he decided to adjust his punishment accordingly. So it's nice for us to reflect on the mercy that Jehovah has shown and also shows to all of us we continually make mistakes. We may fall and we will fall away from him, but he is so merciful to us and will always accept us back. Okay, very good. Okay, so the last one says, what other spiritual gems have you discovered in this week's Bible reading? Sister Height. An aspect of Jonah's example that made me think about the decisions that I make was how many people um, Jonah potentially affected 
both on the boat and in Nineveh in a negative way by the decisions that he personally made. And if I choose to go in the opposite direction of Jehovah's advice, it most likely will affect more than just me. Uh, there is the potential that I'm putting my brothers and sisters under threat of shipwreck. Okay, very good. Uh, Sister uh, Valente. I appreciate it. Excuse me, when Jonah did go to Nineveh in chapter 3, verse 4, um, he walked into the city a day's journey. The city was three days walking across, but he walked right into the middle and started proclaiming this message that was massively unpopular and he was terrified to give. And so I appreciated that and wanted to meditate on that when it comes to doing avenues of service that I'm nervous about and doing that metaphorical walking in right into the thick of it and just trusting in Jehovah and uh, trusting it'll be okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you, everybody, for their wonderful comments. And sorry, I missed if you have. Brother, back to Brother Gonzalez. Again, thank you, everyone, for your uh, prayerful preparation. Uh, we did come across with those comments. We will now continue on with the Bible reading, still in the book of Jonah. Send Jonah 3, 1 to 10, and for that, we'll invite Brother Patrick. Then the word of Jehovah came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to her the message that I tell you. So Jonah got up and went to Nineveh in obedience to the word of Jehovah. Now Nineveh was a very large city, a walking distance of three days. Then Jonah entered the city, and walking a day's journey, he was proclaiming, in just 40 days more, Nineveh will be overthrown. And the men of Nineveh put faith in God, and they proclaimed to fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. When the message received the king of Nineveh, he rose up from his throne and took off his royal garment and covered himself with sackcloth and sat down in ashes. Furthermore, he issued a proclamation throughout Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no man or beast, herd or flock should eat anything at all. They should not take food, nor should they drink any water. Let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and beast, and let them call out earnestly to God and turn from their evil ways and practice the violence they practice. Who knows whether the true God may reconsider what he intends to do and turn away from his burning anger so that we may not perish. When the true God saw what they did, how they had turned back from their evil ways, he reconsidered the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not bring it. 